In Rocket League, we all know there's multiple ways to score. There's a lot of different things you can do. You can do a normal ground shot, any type of flick, or something simple like an aerial shot. Now those might not be the best examples, but within all the different shots in Rocket League, the one of the most stylish and cool looking shots to do are air dribbles. They're not only cool looking, but they have a lot of use to them too, being used at the highest level of gameplay in RLCS. So there's no surprise that people want to learn how to do them, and today I'll be teaching you how to air dribble properly and also show you the different types of air dribbles in Rocket League. Air dribbling from noob to pro level, let's get into it. I just wanted to say real quick, if you end up enjoying the video, please consider subscribing. I'm going to be posting more videos like these, so there's no reason to miss out. It's free and you can always change your mind later. Now let's go. The first type of air dribble would be the most iconic one. Being the type of air dribble from the finals game in RCS Season 1, where Overseer got his team into the overtime by doing this exact air dribble. From this eye by power team. Defense and eye by power, not things you usually talk about at the same time. He's carrying it. Oh, no, they can put it in! They stay alive! We go to game five! What was this coming off the wall? Dribbling it with that Batmobile, spinning it, and that, <laughs> that rotation from over zero was so well done. He used the, the so, how do you do it? Well, let's break it down into easy steps to follow. Step number one, keep the same speed as the ball. What does that mean? Well, you can't move away from the ball. You have to be moving at the same speed as the ball, constantly moving it forwards. But there's a catch. Right at the end of the setup, you do go to the side of the ball, but you're still moving at basically the same speed. Step number two, where do you actually set this air dribble up? Well, with this one, you usually have to start it in your own half. This is the path I normally take and it works flawlessly, even after multiple years of doing this exact thing. You basically go in a line slightly to the left of the corner boost, grab the boost, move slightly to the right of the ball and hitting the very side of the ball. Step 3. Where do you jump off? Well, this one is pretty simple. I'd say around a car's width away from the end of the banner is a good place to jump off with the ball. It's not super complicated. Step number 4. And here's where it gets a bit tougher, jumping off with the ball. Now this one is actually quite tough to get down perfectly. You've now learned how to stay the same speed as the ball, you know where to set it up and where to jump off with the ball. Now we need to combine all that and learn how to move the ball towards the opponent's goal. With this type of air dribble, you don't need to hit it often. The purpose of it is to move it forwards as fast as possible. This type of air dribble requires more forward momentum and not much upwards momentum. Compared to all the air dribble techniques, that's what makes this one so different. When air dribbling, you need to hit the lower middle part of the ball to keep the ball moving forwards and slightly upwards. This helps you with your accuracy too. One thing to keep in mind is when to have ball cam off and when to not have ball cam off. From my own experience, having ball cam off for the setup is the best and once you have done the last touch before going onto the wall, you turn ball cam on and keep it on throughout the entire air dribble. So let's now combine all the steps into one smooth movement. Same speed as the ball, good setup, good jump off the wall, and we're moving the ball forward smoothly. Ball cam usage was good too. And that's how you do the forwards type air dribble. This one is definitely the easiest air dribble to do out of the bunch. And well, I'd say this air dribble is good to start learning at around diamond one level. That's my recommendation, but hey, you can practice it whenever you want. Let's move on to the second air dribble variation and the mediocre level one. Alright, so one thing you'll realize across all of these are that some of the steps are very similar. And that's just how it goes. This air dribble is the most common one. Meaning if you see someone air dribbling, it's probably being done like this. This is the air dribble that starts around the middle boost, going up the side wall and going from there. Being possibly the most useful way of air dribbling, maybe just outside of the next one, this is definitely worth learning. So let's go through the setup for this one. Again, step one is essentially the same as the last one. You have to keep the same speed as the ball. It's a very simple concept, but you have to practice it properly. Step two, the setup. This one is a bit different in that you have to move it towards the middle boost in a line like this. Why? Well, because you need to have more upwards momentum, less forwards momentum opposed to the last one. Meaning you'll have more control of the ball once you jump off the wall and get more hits since you won't be hitting the ball away from yourself. This is why it's called the controlled air dribble. And yes, you always grab the middle boost. It helps you have more options. 
From there, we move on to step 3, where it's exactly the same as the last air dribble. You jump off a car's width away from the end of the banner, and that's the ideal jumping point. It's really as simple as that. Now step number 4, you've jumped off the wall, but now it's time to actually air dribble. And here's where it gets tough. If you did the setup correctly, right as you've jumped off, you should be able to instantly hit very low onto the middle section of the ball, moving the ball upwards and forwards. It will take a bit of practice to get the accuracy right, but don't worry, you don't need to adjust yourself with arrow. But hey, when the time comes, you might want to learn how to adjust yourself with arrow right before getting that first touch. At the start of learning that, you will have less control as you're probably going to hit the ball as it's starting to go downwards, which simply means you're not going to have that smooth air dribble you might be looking for. Again, the ball cam usage for this one is very similar, but it's up to personal preference. You can either have ball cam off in the setup and then turn ball cam on before going on the wall, or you can do what I do and just have ball cam on for the entire time. No matter what though, in the actual air dribble part, you have to have ball cam on. All you have to do now is combine all the steps once again and keep practicing. Keep the same speed as the ball, grab the middle boost, jump off the wall and hit the underside of the ball towards the goal. Of course as you get good at this normal controlled air dribble, you can start practicing flashier stuff like using aerial throughout the entire thing. Now you can practice your aerial control using aerial workshop maps on PC or if you're on console, try stay inside this little circle whilst aerialing consistently. Practice makes perfect, so take your time when learning air dribbling. I'd say it takes about 3 weeks to become very consistent at it. Now let's move on to arguably the toughest air dribble of them all, the ground to air dribble. There's a few setups to this one, but the most common one is the bounce or roll to air dribble. This means the ball has to be bouncing towards you or rolling towards you. The other setup is going from a ground dribble to an air dribble. And I'll teach you all three ways. First off, let's start with the roll to air dribble, as this one is the easier one. And again, let's break this down into easy steps to follow. Step 1, you of course have to be in a situation where the ball is rolling towards you. In game, it doesn't really matter when or where that's happening, just as long as it is actually happening. Anyways, that's step 1. Simple, right? Well, step 2 is way harder. Now you have to actually hit the ball, which is of course the tough part. You want to be hitting the underside of the middle section of the ball as always, and right after you hit the ball, you want to start flying up using a double jump aerial, otherwise known as a fast aerial. Now step 3 is possibly the toughest part of this air dribble, and it's your first touch in the air. This one makes or breaks your air dribble, and as you might have expected, you have to hit the very underside of the ball to get a good first touch and move it upwards and of course forwards. The key to this is to not overestimate your change in the air, meaning don't make too heavy movements when adjusting your car for the hit. You can often simply get the hit, double jump and pull your analog stick backwards or press W if you're on keyboard and without adjusting too much, hit the underside of the ball and keep on carrying it from there. And the same principle with the last air dribble goes with this one too. You have to keep hitting the underside of the ball and most of the time the middle part of the ball to keep the ball moving forwards. Of course it depends on where you're starting the roll or bounce to air dribble. For example, if you're starting more on the left side of the field, you of course have to hit the bottom of the ball, but more on the left side of it. A few things to keep in mind, sometimes you have to use your second jump to touch the ball for the first touch in the air, depending on how heavy your initial hit is. Ball cam usage isn't really too important here. Simply have ball cam on for the entire time, or do whatever you prefer. Just have ball cam on in the actual air dribbling part, that's all that matters. The bounce variation of the ground to air dribble is around the same really. The ball has to be bouncing towards you, but in this one your first touch on the ground is the most important one. The lower on the ball the first touch is, the higher and slower it will go. It's up to preference and you to decide which is the most ideal setup to have. Practice makes perfect here, so of course just practice and see how it goes. All that you have learned so far will help you a lot with this one. So I'll leave this one up to you. Before we get to our toughest, useful air dribble, we have our honourable mention. It didn't make it to the list, but some people want to learn it. So let's take a look at one of the more flashy air dribbles that are less useful. I'm of course talking about the turtle air dribble, a move that has been done for a long time mostly residing in the freestyle community, and this one is possibly the toughest air dribble to do, but is not exactly useful to say the least. 
But hey, nonetheless, let's take a look at how to do the turtle air dribble. To start off, if you're in a freestyle 1v1 with unlimited boost, definitely go for the flip reset off the start. If not, and you're actually trying to pull this off in a real game, you want to have a lineup looking like this. As you can see, you want to go towards the middle boost and move from there. The second step is making sure you're boosting enough and that you have enough boost. As with all the other air dribbles, you do want to be consistently hitting the ball before getting to the wall. You do not want to get a heavy hit right before the wall. That just complicates the entire process a lot more and makes it harder on yourself. Another thing to keep in mind is to not be too far to the side. You can't do this air dribble with forwards momentum. You have to go at it going upwards and hitting the underside of the ball. That way, once you're ready to go off the wall, you're already hitting the bottom of the ball and you can carry it towards the goal. As with the others, you continue hitting the underside middle of the ball to move it upwards and towards the net. Ball cam is preference as always in the setup, but in the actual air dribble, definitely a ball cam on. Now let's get to the toughest possible air dribble, the ground dribble to air dribble. You've probably seen players do this one, and if you're anything like me when I first saw it, I was in awe. It's a beautiful mechanic to do, so let's teach you how to do it. As it goes with any other mechanic, we need to learn all the steps in a ground dribble to air dribble. Step 1 is pretty obvious if anything, you have to be dribbling. Step number 2, and you have to be driving in a straight line to make this simpler for you, but you need to double jump. Step 3, and this is one of the most important parts of the air dribble, you need to hit the ball more so upwards for the first hit. This gives you some time in the air to get it higher and further forwards. If you don't do this, you'll end up losing air time and hit the ground a lot quicker than you wanted to. Step 4 and this is not as much of a step than it is a requirement. You need to be at least somewhat capable with arrow in the air. More so speaking directional arrow like left or right, but any arrow works. The reason is there's a lot of adjustments that you need to make in the air because there's a lot of things that can go wrong when you're trying to get a lot of height out of barely any speed and at the same time push the ball forwards. However, you can still practice it for fun regardless of your aerial skill just on the off chance that you get the perfect setup and a perfect first touch. Either way, the steps are dribble the ball, double jump and boost upwards as soon as possible, get the ball as high as you can without hitting the ceiling of course, and keep hitting the lower middle section of the ball to move it forwards. Because I feel like I'm repeating myself on all of these, probably because I am, I'm gonna stop it there. I hope you enjoyed and found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe, leave a like and all that good stuff. Join my discord if you have any questions or just wanna hang out. But that's about it. I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Coming in, yeah. Flex, I just wanna win, yeah. LABB who we running with, yeah. 2233, I'm on 10 again, yeah. State your name. Big been dope on flame, I just switched the lanes Damn he did it again, I just flipped the pain